Greetings and welcome to an Evos Vox thing. Yes, I'm channeling my inner LGR here today. We're gonna check out some retro stuff. I needed an extra video and originally this was gonna be float plane exclusive and I decided just to make it a standard video because it relates to the channel. This is upcoming content. This is stuff I wanted to talk about. Maybe a nice distraction from everything going on as I've been talking about it quite a bit. And so we have some packages that I've picked up here to go ahead and open and a couple things that have already opened. And I think you're gonna be interested if you're into the kind of content I already cover and what's actually in here. So as I mentioned, not everything I have is being freshly unboxed here, but here I have a PCI graphics card that's also a capture card. This is the ATI, you know, now known as AMD, all in wonder, Radeon graphics card and capture card. It is both a TV tuner and a graphics card. It has DVD decoding. It's capturing from any sort of source. It's, you know, it was used with the Windows Media Center software to capture your TV shows and things like that. It can also be used for capturing gameplay. And then of course, outputting back to your PC monitor. And I am, this is actually kind of the theme for today's video is more retro themed capture card. So I have a formal video coming on it soon, but I wanted to pick one of these up and actually see how useful it is for say VCR capture or things like that. I've done, I've been, I've captured four terabytes of VHS tapes recently. And uh, so I already have a workflow established for that, but I wanted to mess with it a little bit more. And so this is one of the options. They had a few different one, ones of these. Uh, this is the 32 megabyte version. They had some older and newer ones than this. And then I picked up the StarTech uh, PCI to PCIe adapter. I have no idea if it'll work for this. I just wanted to see if I could use it on my existing test bench. And then if not, then I have some older computers with actual PCI slots that we will be messing with this in. Next up, we have some older boxed PC games. These are some of the edutainment or educational video games I actually played as a kid, even in school. And so I'm gonna have a video on the second channel and maybe even some Twitch streams. Uh, about some of these games and things like that. So be sure to subscribe and follow over there. I will have links to it in the description below. So I've got two big box copies of Zoom Beanies. We have the Island, Jer Island Odyssey, which I know I played. Uh, we have the Logical Journey, which I know I played as well. But there's actually some more that we'll cover in a moment. We also have Math Blaster for Windows 98 in search of spot. This is a lot of fun. I played the heck out of this. In fact, some of the most gameplay I had on the PC for a very long time, because I actually started playing PC games at nine months old, was I played a ton of Math Blaster. So I'm hoping it's what I remember. I'm hoping it's still, you know, with context of me being older, just as fun. But I picked that up. And then there was also an episode one version of this for Super Nintendo as well. So I have that inbox as well that I will be showing and talking about. And like I said, maybe even streaming. And then what came with that math blaster was also this Super Solvers Spellbound game. And I sort of remember this. I didn't play it a ton, but I remember, you know, it existing and things like that. So I will be interested to take another look at that as well. A lot of these are running on very old systems. I do need to get my Windows 98 system back up and running for compatibility. But then we have a, one more stack of games here that are pretty interesting. So firstly, we have a three-way spread of the Zumbinis games. I think there were more than this, but these are the most common ones that I see. So we've got Mountain Rescue, and then the two that I already had in the bigger boxes. Uh, I found these first, and then they all ended up coming in at the same time. So that was unfortunate, but still should be pretty cool regardless. But then I also wanna make a video for that gaming channel about Pokemon games for the computer. I had a Pokemon trading card game for the computer as a kid, and I just loved, and it was just the idea of playing Pokemon on the computer was just the most phenomenal thing. Pokemon was a huge part of my life. And so I had like the basic Pokemon trading card game game, uh, but I didn't have anything else. And so I actually looked into getting what every other Pokemon game for the computer I could find. And so there's probably more, and if you have more or you have more of the Pokeroms, do let me know. I would love to cover them in a video, even if I just you know borrow them for a week and send them back just to get them included in the video uh, would be phenomenal. Uh, with the Pokeroms here, these were like little promotional things, typically included in like um, Happy Meal style giveaways and stuff, but clearly they were on clearance from, what well, looks like Big Lots or something here. And these are just educational games for Pokemon I have. These are two of each. So I've got Pikachu, I've got Mewtwo, I've got, in other words, Gengar, and like Poliwhirl. Big stack here, again, I'm looking for the rest of them just to have. And then this was a promo CD for Pokemon Gold and Silver. I don't actually have a clue what was on this yet. I'm super stoked to take a look. 
I've got Pokemon Gotta Make Them All Project Studio. I love these things as a kid. My mom got so mad because I would try to print everything. And I want to try to see how much of these I can get printed again. This is blue version. I also have red version somewhere around the apartment. Uh, I don't know where it is exactly. But I got that. And then apparently they did Pokemon stuff for the PC as late as third gen. Because this is Pokemon Masters Arena, which is clearly Generation 3. And it has like puzzle games and stuff. So I'm curious to see what all other Pokemon games they did for the computer because like I said I was a huge fan and I'd love to see you know what else I could pick up and then came bundled with one of these was Sonic CD for the computer so that'll be interesting to take a look at it at some point again go follow my second channel linked in the video description as well as my twitch I will be doing gaming stuff there as I have time obviously having a newborn makes that a little complicated for streaming but as I can we're gonna be doing some streams and content over there as well all right let's get to the stuff I still have to actually open because that's probably the exciting part Okay, first up here we have this box from eBay. I always find it weird when people actually buy eBay box tape. Like, is it really worth just not getting generic tape? Is it the same cost? What do you do if you need to ship something that's not from eBay? Like, I don't know. It's always just weird to see. Ah, uh, packing peanuts. Don't use packing peanuts in 2020, people. They're the worst, especially if you're someone who has cats. Like, dear God, these are deadly. Don't do that to anybody. Ooh, we're starting out with the big one here. I didn't even realize that's what this one was. Okay, so this is really exciting. So I mentioned at the start of the video that the All in Wonder card was kind of the theme for today's video. Well, this is definitely no exception. We're gonna be looking at quite a few retro capture cards here. This is an ISA, ISA slot capture card. It's a frame grabber, a VGA frame grabber for DOS. Has full ISA slot here, has VGA capture and pass through for actually, you know, sending a feed back out to a monitor, has audio input and pass through as well. This is pretty nuts. This is the creative, you know how they have sound blaster video cards? This is the creative video blaster CT6000. This is a massive card for capture cards. If people complain about how big capture cards these days are, yeah, don't. Look how big this ginormous thing is. This is phenomenal, and I'm experimenting with a lot of these older capture cards to see if I can get, you know, a more accurate and easy capture solution for VGA signals from older computers and stuff like that, because it's actually really difficult. So it will be, for whatever reason, incredibly amusing to me if one of my old Windows 98 or XP computers actually turns into a solid capture PC for those other computers as well, instead of, you know, my giant Red Ripper monster said I'm doing video captures with an ISA card. <laughs> this thing is awesome. All right, here we have another. Honestly, I got so many boxes in today, I'm not even 100% sure what everything is. Oh, this is not a capture card at all. Okay, I promise this isn't a paid ad spot or whatever, but a friend of mine did happen to get the great people over at Allet to send over their new, newish baby monitor cam, the Allet Cam, uh, which can be used for monitoring to your smartphone for an actual baby monitor. Because I was posting on Twitter that we needed a better baby monitor. We had a hand-me-down one. It really wasn't working great. This one's set up for zero to three years. You monitor from your smartphone, get HD 1080p video, has night vision mode, you have bi-directional audio, which is pretty cool, most of the baby monitors don't have it. Background audio stuff, it has a temperature sensor for the room, uh, it's got a magnetic base and wide angle field of view, and you can see here they have it showed up, uh, just viewing like an entire crib if you mount it up above, so that will be pretty handy. And then we have the Smart Sock 2. Now this thing is kind of expensive, but it is really pretty neat for what it is, because it monitors the baby's heart rate, the oxygen level, and things like that, to you know, just make sure your kid is still breathing. Obviously, it doesn't substitute actually checking on your child or anything like that, but it can be, especially for, you know, kids with special health issues or whatever, it can help you just track things over time and give you a little bit more information. I do think there's a line of monitoring too much. It's just feeding into anxiety, but for just a little bit of checking in or whatever, this is pretty neat. So super shout out to Outlet for sending this out. Uh, we were looking for baby monitor solutions, so this will be pretty great to implement, especially since it's something that can integrate with my phone so that I don't have to carry a receiver around all the time and what have you. Pretty neat, super, like I said, thanks to them. Pretty cool, I wasn't expecting that today, to be honest. 
Next up, we have an iPad Air 2. That's probably not it. <laughs> I'm an iPad Pro 2020. Why would I want an iPad Air 2? Aha, so this was another uh, PCI capture card. It's not the older slot, but PCI capture card. There's an LSI chip here, a Pegasus from Intel as well. Philips chip here. So this unfortunately does not have the breakout cables because you can see here there's a big multi-pin connector with more breakout, um, but it does have S-Video input for S-Video capture and things like that. And supposedly it captured VGA signals as well. So I need to research into that breakout cable and generally see how I might be able to utilize this. I think that's mono audio as well. <laughs> utilize this just to test, but I do plan, like I said, some retro capture cards coming in. I don't know the exact model on this. I think it was from a lesser, like obvious or known brand. So it's not something I was super familiar with, but can we just talk about how gorgeous this PCB is? I know that's a weird thing to talk about, but I'm already a fan of the older style, you know, green PCBs, but this one has this just like light and dark dichotomy going on here with this Oh, that just looks great. All the traces are nice and bright. Like this is an aesthetically pleasing component here. Look at all these extra pads that could maybe be wired up for like monitoring or something. This just looks awesome. <laughs> Moving on. Ooh, this one seems to actually come with all the accessories. That makes me excited. So here we have another creative video blaster uh, frame grabber capture card. Actually has a coaxial or RF input. Looks like S video as well as a DIN multi pin breakout connection and 3.5 millimeter audio. It is definitely set up as a TV tuner. As you can see here, this is the TV tuner module going into it. Huh. I'm pretty excited. It's going to be very hard to fully get the drivers working for all of this and find software that I'll actually capture in the way that I want. But some of these are set up to just record straight to, MP, you know, MPEG and things like that. So I'm excited to see what becomes of this. What else we got in here? Oh, this comes with all the paperwork and everything. Creative digital VCR, breakout cables, adapters, a remote potentially in here. So yeah, RF antenna. Oh, so that multi-pin is just an infrared receiver. That's no fun. Uh, S-Video composite and stereo audio. I could actually just connect to an antenna. Obviously, that's not useful now, given that analog TV signals are dead, but still pretty neat. It actually came with the CD driver. Holy cow. Okay, that's going to make my life a lot easier and might even make it easier for some of the other creative cards. Oh, damn. That remote is looking in really good shape. And then we've got breakout cables as well. So this is the most complete package I could expect from any of these capture cards. I was not expecting that at all. So pretty exciting there. All right, this big boy here is the last one for today. And this one is slightly more modern. So that's exciting in and of itself. Oh, is it a full box too? I gotta say, you sometimes get really incomplete stuff with eBay and you just kind of assume that. And then some listings oversell what all they include and some listings completely undersell. Like I had no clue, no way of knowing this was completely new in box. Oh man. Pretty neat though. So this is the creative video blaster editor. It looks like, it actually looks like the DVR that I had through AT&T with my family when I was living at home for a long time. You can already see here though, we've got DV, S video and composite plus RCA audio input. So you could do DV captures if you don't have a Firewire card. Actually, this will be really useful. I may have to make an amendum to my, uh, to my mini DV recording video because I talk about this. Adobe Digital Decoding Support, Turbo Rendering, DVFX stuff. It's got a noise filter, superior video quality. It came with Adobe Premiere Elements 2.0. It'll be interesting to see if that's still in the box. 
Looks like some sort of image sharpening, vivid colors, MPEG or DV. Hmm. No more dropped frames. No more poor quality compression. No more limitations on the frame size or bitrate. We'll see. We'll see about that. <laughs> I get the feeling that's not true. Oh man, this is like amazing. Let's see what is actually in the box. Oh, this looks. I could be buying this new and not know the difference. Holy cow! Installation kit. Premiere Elements 2.0, whatever if you take that key. Uh, here's the editor software. Everything is included. This box is still taped shut. Oh, this side's open. Yeah, this looks like it's basically new in box. So we've got a USB A to B cable here, fairly bog standard. Yeah, all of this is still sealed. I don't think I realized I was buying new old stock of this. This is insane. We have a four pin. A uh, firewire cable, always handy to have when they're not super common these days. And then what looks like to be a power supply in there. And we have the editor itself, which is actually a little bit smaller than I was anticipating. Not a bad thing, because this is definitely smaller than that DVR I had growing up. Oh, and it has pass through as well. So uh, this is the back. We've got 12 volt DC input. RCA and S video output for pass through USB. And then we have the S video, RCA, and DV inputs. This thing is awesome. I would have killed for this back in the day. Like, this could have taken my super early YouTube career with like the original Xbox and stuff to the next level. This is awesome. I can't wait to make a video on this. This is pretty much all today's video was about, was just checking this stuff out, getting excited for some retro capture card reviews. Like I said, if you're new to the channel, I have a huge interest in retro tech. I do a lot of stuff with CRTs and VHS tapes, and I have my whole retro room that I stream from, and I want to mess with a lot more of this stuff, so I just wanted to showcase what I've been working on and what's going on. Do uh, check out my Twitch channel, as I mentioned, twitch.tv slash Vox. If you're interested in sending in more parts to this puzzle, or more of the Pokemon ROM games or anything like that that you want to send in for me to check out on the channel, I do have a PO box that will be on screen and linked in the description below, down below. I don't expect anything from anyone, just I get asked sometimes, so there you go, and thanks so much for watching. Hope you found something enjoyable, or to draw your curiosity. I feel like this would still be useful for people today, even though it's probably harder to find. I'll see you in the next one.